Pop quiz. What is about six feet long, three feet wide, and puts out 43 volts open circuit? A solar panel. Uh, this is just a quick uh, mock-up of what I'm planning to do here. Uh, it's March 2nd, 3rd, something like that. So really oblique, sun still. Um, but it's putting out voltage and uh, you know they'll put out voltage at any uh, I think almost any light even at, even at night I think the top of the bus here well, let's go at the back let's look you can tell the top of the bus there is curved so but that's flat so my plan is now this might actually be enough to accommodate the curve so I'm gonna put one rail here one rail here and this is a uh, unistrut or in this case this is Lowe's uh, variety they call it super strut uh, actually Lowe's had more selection of hardware than uh, when Arns did oddly enough but so I went there nice thing about Lowe's is the beast can come with hey now right Coco you say hi say hi she's on duty let's not bug her no I'm gonna use these to stand off from the root, or the root, the, the uh, roof. So this is where my entry point is. The uh, the thing we hate to do on our roofs is put holes in them. This way I only do, basically I'm gonna do one or two holes per side, and I can mount, you know, three panels. Each of these uh, is about 39 and a half inches wide. This is a 10 foot length. That is, what, 120 inches? If we estimate this up to 40, that gives us four times or three times 40 is also 120. So they fit perfectly. The little bit of extra space is where I'm going to use this. They basically just take up the the width of a uh, of a nut or a bolt rather, and clamp that down, and that will secure that. And my wife actually had the idea. She's smart like that. Uh, we can just drill, we'll drill a couple of holes right here and uh, just put a piece, something, something real thin here just to tie all these together uh, so that if one were to come loose, it's not going to slide out or whatever. Just insurance, you know. So that's kind of the, that's how we're going to attach them to here. And this covers how we're going to attach the unistrut to the bus roof. I am going to have to drill. I have a little spring nut here. I'm going to have to drill a hole here because these don't have holes there. Uh, but I want this channel here so I can mount like that. I was thinking about assembling on the ground here. I'll check in. Quick little update here. When you're drilling holes through uh, steel like this, and you need to drill this size hole, you can't start with that size hole. I only took uh, two years of machine shop in high school, but start with a smaller drill, and you gotta use some oil. I'm using uh, some chain lube. Probably not best, but it's better than nothing. So start with a little pilot hole, drill that through, then go after this big boy. It worked great on this one here. So this is the first piece in there, and that is not going anywhere. Put a lock washer on there. That's really important. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get take care of the other uh, three holes, and we'll get them up there. Oh, got no, this. I got die car all, all over my hands. Wow, this is some nasty stuff. All right. Um, so this is uh, got section one on. So what I ended up doing, my original plan was to bend these brackets but they don't bend which is great that means they're super strong uh, I ended up just putting an extra washer I had under there and uh, I have yet to cover these with die core completely I kind of I sealed up this one that's kind of, I might even put more on it when it's all done but um, I want to kind of test things out first because I think once it's covered uh, it doesn't really want to come off ever so that's uh, what I'm doing I'm gonna 
put one of them up here and uh, see if I can't cinch it down a little bit or something. That's my next move. And clean off some of these tools. All right, real time, this is, I don't know, probably about four minutes after this last clip. So I got one on. You can see the clearance I have. I am uh, maybe doing a no-no and I'm kind of making that hatch useless so long as there's a panel there. I don't know, maybe I can figure out a way for that panel to flip up if I ever needed to get up there or something. For right now, uh, I probably gotta figure out how I'm gonna anchor that one on the end and then I can stack them on there. And then maybe uh, cut some wire for the ends, crimp a couple ends on, and realistically tomorrow is when I could probably actually turn it on for real, but it might get cold again and snow. It's hard to tell these days. All right. Well, I got one on and I've got good news and bad news. One, it doesn't move. That's good news. This doesn't move either. And that's just one. And I can put another one in there. I, I feel like I should have some on the ends for insurance and you know still tie these together, but wow, this is strong. But here's the bad news. I forgot to put on a lock washer, so I'm gonna pull that out. What I did notice is because I'm putting these on kind of upside down and I need to put them through so I can't put them through the strut channel with this little blue clip on there. I had to take that blue clip off. I found if I go like that, I can just pop it off. I can break it. And then, then I can get this piece down there. And basically it just locks into place like that. See, as you screw it, as you tighten it up, and then it's just boom, ready for the next one. I like this. This is a pretty good system. Here's the third one mounted, and for the time being, I have connected them up in series. Here's how much room is left on the end of that strut. Let's go over to the other side. This is what's left on this strut. So not much, but wow, that's just perfect. It is like a perfect fit. This is great. I don't have the ones on the other side yet. I'm gonna add those here. Uh, as you can see, there's snow over there. So I'm gonna have to probably get out a ladder and go over there. But I might wait to do that. I might uh, actually crimp some wires and see see if I can't uh, at least hook this up, at least temporarily. See where we get here. All right. Let's see if I can get this to focus. I don't know if you can see this very well, but I soldered this, and uh, I know you're supposed to be able to crimp it. I crimped it a little bit. You know, I just don't trust crimped connections very much. Especially on something like this, which could have a lot of amps and volts through it. So, uh, you want to reduce resistance, and that reduces heat as much as you can. So, uh, I went ahead and soldered it. And <clears throat> lately, my tool of choice for soldering is using one of these. Got it on Amazon. It's for it's a it's actually a kitchen torch, but I love it. I use it for all kinds of stuff. And then just use a roll of rosin core solder. Always got to have that. And got this roll of 10 gauge wire from Lowe's. 10% off because the top spool part fell off. <clears throat> so it's 80 bucks for 500 feet. Will I ever need 500 feet? I don't know, but I now I have it. So I'm going to make up a couple of these and then maybe hook it up to the Victron. Daylight's fading, but I don't know. We'll see. The other thing I was going to add is these connectors. Wow, these are... These work so well. These just slide right on. No big deal. Um, and there's a little, there's like a rubberized gasket or crimp, crimper in there that makes an airtight, watertight seal around there. And I'm just gonna, then you just gotta, uh, you just screw these. Well, I'm gonna have to use two hands now, but you basically, you just screw that together and it's good to go. Oh, it's dark, it's late, but I have the, uh, this charge controller in there and I'm almost certain I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to add a second one it's only about 300 bucks not the end of the world but I like redundancy I think I'm gonna add a second one of those too this is a complete mess I promise pinky swear we're gonna clean this up this is a complete mess I don't like it but I'm kind of a prototype proof of concept kind of person so that's what this is this summer when it's nice and warm I'll unhook all of this and it'll look nice and pretty. 
Uh, but check this out. Uh, we have, well, it shows a PV charger. It's too dark out to actually show any watts. I measured what's coming out of there with my trusty multimeter. It was like 0 0.08 volts or something, so it does not surprise me at all that we're getting nothing on the charger. Again, if you're curious what this monitor is, it's my uh, Raspberry Pi Victron uh, battery monitor system. It does all kinds of cool stuff. It's all touchscreen. All kinds of cool stuff you can do with it. I like this screen the best, I think. I like how it shows where things are going and all that. But Oh, that's all I got. So that's it for today. It was, uh, let's get some light. Oh, where are we? I look like a mess, jeez. Uh, that's it for tonight, today. Uh, it was, what, it's about 7, 8 o'clock now. Uh, working since about 1, 1.30. But I did get the other side uh, uh, cinched down. I moved the bus up just a little bit so I could get around this side with my lovely scaffold. I'm cleaning up a little bit for tonight. See you guys next time. Like, comment, subscribe, I don't care.